I'm Chris P, and a couple years ago I decided to get together with some artist friends and record our conversations while we draw, and maybe have a couple drinks or two. It's probably not funny, the audio quality is not so great, we broke the 180 rule and had to flip the master shot, but if you like listening to artists talk about drawing and shit that happened to them, then maybe this is for you. It's called The Tongue and Pencil. Pete Brownhart. Hey, Chris. Thanks for coming to the Tongue and Pencil. Oh, awesome. This Glad is to be here. My experiment thing <laughs> I'm trying out. We draw pictures and bullshit yeah, yeah. with it's each other. Fun. So uh, you can start drawing whenever right. you're ready. Let's see. So, Let's um, see what comes out. <laughs> uh, we were just talking about what the fuck was I about to say before we started um, here? About the Stern uh, waiting. Oh, yeah. Things to come out with that. Oh, no, it was right before that. The camera, so. Check it out, when I first yeah. set these cameras up, right, I just hastily, I was like, I need a down shot, down shot, yeah. a close up, a close up. And it's like cartoon guys, right? We're cartoon guys, mostly. Yeah. And you, when you're drawing a board, yeah. you know the concept of the 180 rule. But I yeah, realized yeah, yeah. after we shot a bunch of these, like, that camera's on this side of us. And, and these that's cameras on that side, that's like, totally breaks on me, yeah. so I'm going to flop the two shot on all these. So we're oh, gonna that's fine. Break the one. So all your Budweiser logos will be backwards. And just on the, just on the, the live shot. Just on the live shot. You can't even see it so yeah, far he's away. Zoom in. <laughs> so it's like, there you go. Fucking fancy pants directors uh if i can break in the one yeah rule. yeah forget yeah right, forget right, the right. owner I, I don't think about it uh for like uh you know like real cameras it's like a theoretical rule yeah but yeah, it applies yeah, yeah. in reality yeah. because that's what it's made for that's true um so um anyway so you're another uh like east coast guy i am yeah I grew, up, I grew up on um Eastern Long Island. Yeah, whereabouts? Uh, small town called Sag Harbor. It's like part of the Hamptons now. Yeah. My family's been there for years. Uh, we're like locals and um, yeah, and uh, I miss it actually. I miss I miss the East Coast more than you think. Yeah. With this weather, well, not with the weather they're having now. Yeah, yeah it's pretty nuts. Not with that particular weather. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, but um, yeah, the um, and so you, you're one of those guys. You know, I have, I have this type of experience too that worked both in New York and LA yeah, on yeah. stuff. So, you, you know, when did you start drawing pictures and stuff? Were you a guy who always drew pictures as a kid? I did. I, um, well, I had some older brothers that were pretty older than me. They were like uh, 11 and 12 years older than me. And they, um, they were into filmmaking and animation and drawing. My older brother Tom, he, he always like was way into art drawing at school and stuff like that so I like looked up to them like tons so I used to like mimic them yeah and they exposed me to a lot of cool stuff at an early age so yeah I was always drawing I was always encouraged to draw uh, by them and I guess I was okay for my age at that time and I was encouraged by people in school and stuff like that so um, yeah I've been drawing for a long time and then I like won like you know like a fire prevention poster contest in fourth grade and it's like these little things that sort of encourage you because you get recognition and it's like feels good you yeah. know so you like keep doing it and then um, since they were older and they knew like a lot about how animations made and stuff they explained it to me and my dad and, and my brother made me like a um, out of the back of that Preston Blair book one of those animation tables oh, when nice. I was like six or seven or eight years old Oh, that's I can't remember cool, the exact man. age, but, uh, and I, they taught me the, you know, they got a whole puncher and I actually started making like little animated films when I was like eight. I still oh, have dude. them on Super 8. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So you got a real early start. Yeah, I did. Stuff. I really did. And, and it was like, and I fell in love with it and, uh, and like all that, all that stuff, like, um, you know, Warner Brothers cartoons and then also like the Muppets and stuff that's not animated, like Pee Wee, Pee Wee Herman, stuff like that. Who's Playhouse. Yeah. You, you know, Dave Vanderfort. I know the name. He's like a really crazy good animator. Yeah, right? yeah he yeah. Uh, he's a guy who like got the illusion of life when he was like five years old by accident. Like his grandparents <laughs> gave it to him for for Christmas because yeah. it 
like, ah, it's a cartoon. It's about Disney cartoons or something. Yeah. So he had such this crazy weird advantage where he started animating when he was like, like six years old or something. Amazing. His real, from when he's like 15 years old, is better than like most like <laughs> kids like that's awesome. coming out of school. You know, it's nuts. I would, yeah, my reel definitely probably wasn't like that, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I, you know, I just did like weird things, you know, animated like a bee going into a guy's mouth, yeah. like, just strange little things. Yeah, what's um, your, what's one that you remember? Is there like a... That one, I remember that. I remember like a dog food bag falling on a dog. I don't know, just weird things that don't really fucking make any sense or anything, but like, That's for some reason it made me, made, made me laugh when I was a kid, so. That's cool. That's something. a good start. It makes you laugh. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> so then, yeah, I just kept doing little animated things. And then in high school, I got into like stop motion animation because the night before Christmas yeah. it really blew my mind and stuff. And uh, I made like a stop motion film in um, my basement, nice. stuff like that. And uh, always, I went to life drawing a lot early on because I, he, my brother found out about Cal Arts and told me about Cal Arts because like I was into Tim Burton and Pee Wee, oh, yeah. and Paul Rubens and Pee Wee Herman and stuff. And uh, I, I like had my sort of goal, like my eyes set on that at an early age. So I like read about how to get into that school, and yeah, and all my other classes felt by the wayside, you know. And I just like so. Let's talk about that a little bit. So you, you know, ended up going to Cal Arts. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was. Uh, how'd you like that? I really liked it. I had a good time. It was like the I, I grew up in a small town and a small, really small high school. Like only like. Only like 150 kids in the whole high school. It's super small, and like when I got to Cal Arts, I met like like-minded people, you yeah, know, and yeah. it was like this really, uh, really great feeling. So I really, I really loved it. And, um, and did it um, blow your mind to see naked girls swimming in the pool? Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> awesome. Yeah, our second year, we, my roommate and I got a, uh, a pool pool view. Yeah, it was awesome. And his, we have a funny story. His like little brother came out, and he was like 10. Yeah. And he was like, we're like, oh, come on, man, let's let's go around L.A. We'll show you L.A. and stuff. And he was like, no, I'm just going to hang out in the room. Ah. And we realized that he was just like checking out the girls out the window yeah. at the pool the whole time <laughs> whenever so we weren't cool. there. <laughs> so I was like, oh, that's, that's, that's probably what I would be doing, too. Yeah, well, I, I was too. doing it, but I was you know, yeah. 18 and he yeah. was 12, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it doesn't seem so different in age now. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, it it's doesn't. Like, that's pretty much the same age. Yeah, it's like the same fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I had a really good time. Um, it was sort of everything I you know, thought it was going to be. Who were your classmates at that time? Um, Audie, Audie Harrison's like, he was my, I was one of the first people I met there and we became uh -huh. roommates and he's actually my supervising producer on my Uncle Grandpa Cartoon nice. Network. And uh, he, um, and then Jorge Gutierrez was above me, so I got yeah. to know him. He's a Book of Life guy, and yeah. amazing, amazing director, and um, a, bu a bunch of other people. I mean, uh, JG and JJ, they were like a couple of years below me. I kind of remember them when I was leaving, yeah. fourth year. Um, I'm trying to think who else. There's, uh, it's everybody like, like is doing something in animation that's crazy, like they're either at Pixar or have a show or they're, you know, a designer or a board artist in feature or something like that. It's, it's pretty, pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. When you end up like those relationships you forge in school, you end up working with a lot yeah, of people. Oh yeah, they actually, that was like the best, some of the best advice yeah. I got from a teacher was like, um, was like, look around this room. He said, look around this room. You see everybody here? Yeah. He's like, don't piss anyone off. Yeah. Cause they'll, they'll all be, you know, working with each other or, or in some capacity, you know. <laughs> and he was right. Yeah, know? sure. You know, and the crazy thing is Kay, Kay, uh, Casey Alexander, who's like my um, board director or supervisor of the storyboards and stuff, uh, yeah. Uncle Grandpa, he uh, he was like my our, our cubicle mate. Like, at, we shared studio space at Cal Arts freshman year. And we were friends and stuff. And he went off and got a job on SpongeBob doing boards. And he did, like, tons of boards on SpongeBob. And, and then, like, when Uncle Grandpa came around, I was like, I hadn't talked to him in years, but like just that experience of knowing him then, I was like, oh, he'd be perfect for this. It's That's amazing. Great. And you just, and then he, he, he was like, SpongeBob was wrapping up the television. Uh, and was he perfect? And he was. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it was great. <laughs> That's always good to that when that works out. I've had like yeah. that experience on both sides, like 
the latest one, this Turbo Show, like uh, Anthony Leoy, who was one of my college buddies and roommates, he went to SVA with me. Yeah. He had been working on all the Fox primetime shows, like directing on like, he was on King of the Hill and then on American Dad. And he, he was like supervising director on American Dad. They jumped off to direct on the first season of Avatar. Uh -huh. And then he was like, oh man, I gotta get back to Fox. Cause you know, making cable TV is way different than making oh, network yeah. TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he went back and was on uh, the Cleveland show for like, he was the supervising director for three seasons. And then that ended and I needed a good dude for this turbo show. Yeah. And I was like, man, I've never really worked with him. I was like college roommates with him. I know he has all this cool experience and yeah. stuff. And I like fought real hard for the DreamWorks guys to like hire him. And they did. And he worked out fucking yeah, great. That's he was so good. I was yeah. like, oh, thank God my yeah, friend is awesome. great. Because it's awesome. like, you know, it would suck if it didn't yeah, work like, out. Because yeah, like, you could put your neck out. On being awesome. Yeah. So I was like, oh. Man, because I like vouched for him and you know coached him. I was like, make sure you do a magic trick because he's a magician oh, at the Magic cool. Castle. I was like, do a magic trick for like the the main dude and he'll be stoked. And he was. That's so awesome. It worked out. I've never been to that Magic Castle. I gotta go. Dude, it's fucking awesome. I know, I know, I know. There's a heavy overlap between animators and uh, yeah, people that magicians. yeah, it kind of makes sense. Oh it's like, God. yeah, it's because animation is kind of a magic trick, you know? Yeah. You have to, like, exactly. you're, slow, you're slowing time down, you're slowing motion down to, like, figure how yeah. it works. And it's like, there's all these little tricks that deceive the eye to yeah. do it. Yeah, there's so many. I find out, and there's, like, I think, like, three or four guys who work here that are, like, magicians. Like, the magic yeah, castle. that's awesome. It's, like, that's nuts. Damn. So. So you went to Cal Arts. And what, so what kind of films did you make at Cal Arts? Not very good ones. <laughs> um, let's see, my, I was, uh, my freshman year film was really terrible. It was, uh, it was about a kid who's trying to get his pet lizard to like be like Godzilla. I was like way into Godzilla movies and yeah. stuff. And, uh, Godzilla's cool. and he ends up killing, killing the thing because he's like, um, feeds it. He's trying to get it to like eat a city and it feeds it. All this weird shit and it <laughs> dies and he just flushes it down the toilet. Really doesn't have a story. <laughs> and then uh, my second year one was called Imaginary Problems. It was about a like imaginary friend who is like all depressed and, and is in therapy because the kid is grown like the kid that he was an imaginary friend to is grown up um, and uh, doesn't remember imagine him anymore. Yeah, so he's like true. all bummed out. It's and then sad film. yeah, it was pretty sad. Uh, <laughs> My, uh, Everybody's got to make a sad film. Yeah, story. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I didn't make a film my third year. So I did like an animatic. It was about like this. It was like a goldfish. I can't remember that one. <laughs> my fourth year film was kind of cool. I was probably most proud of it, even though I, I was kind of just like a glorified animatic. It wasn't super ant finished or anything. It was like um, it was about this old man who was what is like gets abducted by aliens and is forced to in like rape an alien Whoa. it's like super strange like uh it's like forced to have sex with this giant alien bug in outer space <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was cool it was it freaked a lot of people out so that was cool like people because it kind of had like a surprise ending you kind of didn't expect uh what was the surprise part with him getting him fucking the giant alien. Ah, the rape part <laughs> the rape remember? was yeah. the surprise part yeah so but uh which I, I, I like dug that. Yeah. But, um. Well, I guess that's good that that's a surprise. They weren't like uh, Brown Guy always with the rape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, like, that's true. You know, yeah. Another, oh, I know what's coming. Rape. Yeah. <laughs> Classic <laughs> Brown Guy. <laughs> so, um. So when you initially graduated Cal Arts, you ended up going back to New York for a bit, right? Uh, I yeah, I did. Timeline? No, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I, basically, I finished. I finished Cal Arts, and I worked out here a little bit. I actually worked for Jorge on a on a oh, Flash show at Sony nice. Screen Blast, and then that got that got canned. And Screen Blast actually, the whole the whole company went away, and it was like during the dot com oh, crash yeah, kind of thing. Dot com crash. Yeah, and uh, and then nine eleven happened, so that yeah. even dried up work out here even more. Yeah. So I was like. Um, I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna go back to New York and just hang out with friends and see what happens. So I went out there, 
and then um, I, I was like, oh, I should try to apply for work in animation out here. And I didn't really know of any, <clears throat> and in New York Animation Studios, MTV wasn't really around anymore at that time. Yeah. And um, I remember when that shut down. Yeah, down. exactly. Was like, I remember my Carlo saying, like, he just assumed he was going to work at MTV when he was in school. Yeah, it was like, like a big else. thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, oh, I'll just graduate and I'll go work at MTV. And then it shut down and he's like, oh, yeah. what am I going to do? <laughs> I know, it's like, uh, it was like the big, uh, it was like the big um, studio for the East Coast in that yeah. for New York City and stuff. Yeah, yeah. totally. And, uh, and I, I think I knew about Ogham Lick Studios when I was, um, when I was, here so i applied there yeah. and uh he didn't have I mean, aaron didn't have anything going on at that moment but he kept me in mind and then when something popped up i started working there on this shorties watching shorties for comedy central oh, yeah? yeah and i, I met a, i met a ton of people um nice uh that i you know from new york and i kind of like got work bounced off of work you know after that different places around there but uh it was an amazing experience like new york the thing about New York that I, it made me a better cartoonist and a yeah. better like uh, uh, all around like well-rounded cartoonist or animator or animation artist yeah. because you have to like to get work there and like survive at that time you had to like know a little bit of everything. Yeah, that's what I always talk about with people. Yeah. That's what I was surprised about when I first moved out here. It's like people can have a career only doing one thing. Yeah, it's like oh yeah, I'm a character designer. It's like yeah. And, like yeah, but what do you do when you're not doing that? And you're like, what are you talking no, about? No, dude, that's all I do. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I've never it's like had way more specified or yeah. animate anything or yeah, like use After Effects or all the things that you have to figure out when you're like doing a bunch of things. Also, that's pretty much why this studio exists is because I was so used to take a freelance in New yeah. York. Like I worked at MTV, but I would like animate on commercials and stuff because like. It was good money, and it's like you never knew how long your gig was gonna last. Yeah. Um, and uh, oh, by the way, hey, oh, cheers, yeah. dude. Cheers. I Absolutely. Cheers you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having yeah, me. Right this on. is really cool. Yeah, of course. I moved out here, and uh, can't forget the drink. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I uh, kept taking freelance work, and then after a while, I was like, "Fuck! How am I gonna do all this freelance work? Yeah. Like, I took too much because I wasn't used to their." like an equation where there was too much freelance yeah. work. So I had to start hiring my friends to help me with my freelance work. And then like Shannon ended up like quitting her job and just producing my freelance work and eventually convinced me to quit Cartoon Network yeah. and focus on this full time because it was like, she's like, this is what's going to yeah, you know, it's be growing. Your job. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. She's the one that could see it at the time. I was real nervous to to quit because I was on a show that was ongoing, you know, it wasn't yeah, like that's, it was that's a really. That's I was really like, different. had to go, like, um, Jay Bastion was my exec at the time, and I remember he was in town, I had, it was all nervous, like, I got a coffee, my hand was shaking, when oh, I tell man. him, like, I'm, but I had, do you know Kelsey Mann? Yeah, I do know Kelsey. Yeah, I was like. He was at Cartoon Network right when I started, yeah, and then he I left to like, go to Lucas. So, yeah. good, I was like, he was like, my favorite director on the show, I was like, I talked to him, I was like, hey, would you take over the show if I left and of course he was like yeah absolutely so I was like Kelsey uh, Kelsey could take over when I leave I had a whole plan so he yeah. wouldn't be angry at me and then he's like I don't care like you know you, you're you all self-absorbed when you're doing these things you, you are think everybody yeah. cares yeah. about yeah. you, you think everyone's like, talking no, the show about will you. go on without yeah. you of course like, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah okay that's cool so um so you worked on that you worked did you work on the Fridays thing with Kevin too I did I yeah did. I did Kevin right I met on. Kevin through Aaron and then I worked, right I did, on. I think it was assistant director there. Nice. And then uh, I worked on Venture Brothers for a little bit, but I failed on Venture you Brothers. Did. Yeah, man, because like, I can't draw that style, like that. Con like Chris that. is pretty particular. Yeah, too. Chris is very particular, and Chris yeah. is an amazing artist. But Chris, Chris convinced me. I told yeah. Chris, I was like, I can't do this. And he's like, no, I think you can, I think you can. And I really love Chris. And I, I was like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a stab at it. And it was hard, man. I, I couldn't even fake it. Yeah. I did it for like a couple of weeks, and I was actually just subbing. I didn't have like a full time job, and I just was subbing in for somebody who was like, I think on their honeymoon or something. Yeah, sure. And uh, and I was like, I was sweating bullets, man, trying to draw those characters, like trying to get anything. <laughs> I was just like, I'm a. Yeah, they're tough. They're hard. You know, I just don't. I don't draw like that, and uh, it, it's like a different sort of school. And there's some cartoonists 
that can do cartoony stuff or weird stuff and then also jump like over and do yeah like Steve DeStefano or like Bob Camp or like He's people that can do style yeah. under his belt, it's yeah it's like those people are they're the old school like master like sort of a master of our modern in the modern yeah. age it's master of cartooning that can look at something and figure it out you yeah. know how to, how to do it yeah I think you know I used to be really good at that because animating on commercials you had to be able to nail a yeah. style like really fast like or else you wouldn't get work you know yeah so you had to be able to draw on model and stuff because before you know you could copy and paste shit on a computer you yeah. actually had to draw everything but man I really lost it over the years <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's, it's yeah. like it's like a it's like a muscle you gotta just keep exercising yeah that's why I like doing this now it's fun to doodle because I used to keep these sketchbooks all do you, do you still keep a sketchbook up man i i am like i have this weird thing with sketchbooks is where i want them so bad yeah. but i get i look at people that keep them and they're fucking amazing at them yeah and i get so self-conscious yeah, about I doing do. it and i can't I, the best thing i have is like post-its by my all desk I do now too and then i bend but my new thing is i get like loose leaf paper or like copy paper from the copy room yeah. and i just keep it under my wacom and I doodle on it because then if I fuck up or I do like a drawing I hate, yeah, I just can yeah. throw it out. But when you get a sketchbook, like if you want to get like, oh, I'm gonna get a cool moleskin sketchbook and like fill it up, and it's you know you look at you know all these great cartoonists that have these amazing sketchbooks, and it's like as soon as you mess up, it's like oh, it's ruined. Yeah. So I, I, that drawing lives in that sketchbook, and I, it's gonna be there. And I, I don't know, maybe I get a little too crazed about it, but um, no, I get it, man. It's nuts. But uh. I, I don't. I wish I did. I really do, because I, I, I'm more of just like, I find that if I draw in like a, spot like a, paper that has lines on it, like a notebook or something. Yeah. It's like not as precious or something. And yeah. I can like I can be. More free about just like not giving a fuck about what I'm doing. I just find like, that too. Yeah. Like you draw in like graph paper or like, index cards or something. Yeah. Because it has all those extra weird lines, yeah. you don't feel like oh, you this don't is really not care. a real sketchbook. You know, that's uh, that comes up a lot in these, like, since I've been doing these things. There's a guy. There's this amazing cartoonist uh, who works on Uncle Grandpa named Nick Edwards, and uh, he's over in the UK. Oh, and he yeah. actually does boards for us, but yeah. we just he's like skypes with Mike Chillian and their partners, and they Skype. Yeah. And he he came out for a visit finally because he's done so much for the show and, yeah. and it was so great to meet him. But his sketchbook was so fucking incredible, man. It was like he pulled out of his backpack and he's like, oh yeah, let, yeah, check it out. Or like I was, I asked him to see it. And I was looking through it. and It's like it's like every page is like gorgeous. And yeah. It's like it's so because he's like 22 or something. Yeah. <laughs> I was so jealous and like yeah, I know like it's just so it's like it's like a work of art. It's amazing. I think we might. Other on one of those social yeah he's, he's, whatever, yeah, he's I dig his stuff. yeah he's really really great and, uh, and super prolific for his age like he just cranks work out it's like yeah crazy. did you ever work for the ink tank no I never did no Bob Blackman so you know that guy he was like a uh, the name sounds really illustrator familiar. and the New Yorker and he he developed that like kind of real broken line wiggly style in yeah. the 70s like I remember going to when I was at MTV, I was like, man, I gotta try out another studio, you know. And Ink Tank was another big one in New York at the time, and I showed him my book, and I was 24 at the time. He was going through it, and he's like, how old are you? I'm like, 24, he's like, it's pretty good for a 24-year-old. <laughs> I remember, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, mm, not good enough. I mean, um, I ended up staying at MTV. That was a good gig, man. That was a good time. Back there. Yeah, you really made a name for yourself there too, man. You yeah, like really cool. named and like a bunch of you guys met each other there. Christy, Christy, Dude, Chris. we all met there. You know, it was yeah. cool. We, I was super lucky to just fucking fall into that shit because I thought first I thought I would move out here and then uh, I ended up getting a job for Ralph Bakshi. Right, that was like the I first time, but I didn't end up working it. Like he hired me, uh -huh. and then like he was making this short film and. I was going to animate on it, and then I just I started on Beavis Butthead, and I was working there for two weeks at MTV doing revisions until my big Bakshi thing, because I was like, fuck the man, I'm going to be an independent guy, I don't yeah. want to make weird, fucked up films, and then I went 
like after my two week gig to like check out Bakshi Studio and it was closed up. It was like a cartoon <laughs> with like tumbleweeds and fucking the door, like you push the door and it just creaks open and the like shutters are flapping yeah. and stuff. And I'm like hot footed it back to MTV. I was like, like you still got a job? Like, yeah, like, yeah we need people. Yeah. So uh, I'm staying here. Yeah. yeah. But um, and, and then, you know, so I ended up staying at MTV and uh, met a bunch of cool motherfuckers there. Yeah. And when we did our last Adult Swim panel at Comic Con, Mike Judge moderated, and somebody asked him about MTV, and he went on this tirade about how badly they fucked up. And he's like, they had everybody there. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was like a nice little warm fit because he pointed at me and he's like, That's they had awesome. Chris P, they had Christy, they yeah. had all these. He was like going down the line of all the guys. They had Aaron. Augen Blitz, yeah, yeah, all these fucking guys talent. were all yeah. there, and they fucking blew it. Yeah, all the best. And now Adult Coast Swim guys. took them all. Yep. You know? yep. they, they profited so, from it in that yeah, sense. Yeah. You know, they got all you guys to make shows, and yeah, it worked out yeah. for Adult Swim yeah. and MTV. I mean, I'm doing a pilot for them. I shouldn't shouldn't fucking shit on them right now, which is pretty <laughs> cool. They're pretty cool. I think they're trying to get back into it again now. Yeah, that'd be back I mean, pedal enough on that one. Yeah, there's a little bit more. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> But um, so you, you 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 stayed in New York for a while. Yeah, and then, and then I did you know a bunch of different things there. And then while I was there, I actually met Stephen DiStefano, and Stephen yeah. DiStefano was like a huge influence on me in the sense of it was kind of he kind of exposed me to all these cartoonists and comic strip artists from like back in the day. He'll do that. that. Yes, and that I never knew of, and yeah, yeah. it was like a fucking explosion in my mind when I saw it, and it. It made me look at cartooning in a totally different way, yeah, yeah. and um, and I helped him out on a couple projects, and he, he gave me some, you know, he, it was kind of like, a, you know, he kind of mentored me in a, in a strange way, you know, not every day or anything, but here and there, and and I worked with him on, uh, at that funny garbage on the show Disney show called Cat Bot that never never that. yeah never got made, yeah. but uh, he was an art director on it, and uh, he he liked my stuff and or and and just thought I had potential, I think, and he had. Um, he had a, the hookup to out here, you know, because he, he worked yeah. out here at Spumco and everything, and and to pitch to pitch to Cartoon Network, and they were asking him to pitch some ideas. So he asked me to pitch with him, and he's like, let's each come up with three ideas, and uh, we'll fly out to L.A. It was me, um, Phil Rinda, and, and him, yeah. nice. and uh, he was like, we'll pitch them and see what happens. So we. Um, so I just was like, oh fuck, this is amazing. So I just like got my I had this little studio apartment in Brooklyn, and I just like thought of any every kind of idea I could have and did drawings and stuff and I narrowed it down to like the three that I thought were the funniest or most original or whatever. And we flew out here and we, we pitched them to Craig McCracken and Robert and Zeddy and Heather Kenyon. So, so that was for the Cartoon Institute. Was no, it actually it wasn't. It was before no. that. And, yeah, and while right. I was out here, Carl Greenblatt was working on Billy Manny and got chowder greenlit. Oh, yeah, and he yeah. saw my pitches. He saw oh, my pitch nice. books. So what were those pitches? One was Uncle Grandpa. Oh, nice. Yeah, one was Uncle Grandpa, and one was um, this one about fossils, and this other one was about uh, like a, a failed or a, a, a hamburger mascot for like a fast food mm -hmm. chain, who's like um, who basically it's set in the future, and uh, he uh, can't find any work because everyone's like on a health craze. That and fast like food's bad. Buddy, JJ. Yeah, it is. It's just like yeah. that. It's so weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so he's like a temp worker, and he works all these different jobs. So it was like this, like kind of like slapsticky comedy of him like working all these shitty jobs around the city. But right. he's like a, he, he, you know, everybody else in those jobs can take off the hamburger head yeah. or the costume, but he's actually like that, so he yeah. can't. Kind of thing. Um, so then, uh, and McCracken responded to Uncle Grandpa. He's like, "You should develop this." And then while it was, and then that happened. So I was going to go back to New York, and then Carl Greenblatt saw my pitch book for that and the other ideas, and he asked me to come out and work on Chowder, and he asked me to be a designer on Chowder, and I was like, oh, "I nice. want to do story." I was like, yeah. "I know that you guys are going to do story, like uh, like SpongeBob does it, like the old school way of like it's all there's no scripts and it's premise driven, and I really wanted to do that. Like I really yeah. like that idea. It's kind of the old." Old um, Dude, that's the shit. way. So yeah. Carl's like, well, you don't have the experience, so I can't hire you doing that right away. But you can come out and do revisions, sort of revisions, and sort of learn. And I jumped on the opportunity, and I moved back out here, and that's and I've been at Cartoon Network ever since. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, that's awesome. Yeah. So it, it worked out, luckily. But it was it was nerve wracking, man, because it's like, you know, there was like there's amazing people at Cartoon Network, and like. 
coming in there, I was like super intimidated. It was kind of reminding me of Cal Arts, you know. Like, yeah. So who was on uh, Chowder at that time? Um, it was Carl, Carl and uh, Bill Reese was the creative director. Clay Morrow, um, Tom King. Um, who else was there? It was uh, Alex Almaguer. Uh, Brett Verone was on it for a while. Uh, he came a little later. Um, yeah, and, and Phil Rinda was on it. He was designing. Um, and uh, it was it was great. I learned so fast, too, like just being around it and watching these yeah, guys. Yeah. It's I feel amazing. That too, like, you know, I went to art school, right, at SBA. It's like, SBA is cool. It's a cool school. But I think way less focused than Cal Arts on like the training part. It's more mm -hmm. like, you know, really, I fucking love my instructors, but a lot of them were like, oh, that means it's time to switch. Oh man, switch time. All right. All right. Here oh. we go. This is the fun part where we uh. get to look at each other's drawings. Oh, so you haven't seen it? I mean, I try not to like <laughs> peek too much. I just look to see if like things are poking too far into frame. Like oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the, um, Oh wow, nice. awesome, Chris. Fun. Sure. Yeah. Amazing. That's what I love. This is crazy doodles. This is awesome. <laughs> I'd love to see this. So fun. I'm gonna switch to a thinner pen for this one. Yeah, okay, maybe I'll switch to a powder pen for this one. Nice. Match the line line weight. Yeah. The um but uh, yeah, a lot of the instructor instructors at SBA were cool, but they were like a lot of them were like like more like beatnik guys or yeah. like ad guys that weren't like they weren't like Disney animators or guys that you know were focused on like real like kind of traditional animation training. You because you went through the traditional animation program. Yeah, like, yeah, it was yeah. character animation. Yeah, it was uh, it was really focused. Like we had a th every assignment yeah. was like focused on how to animate the Disney yeah. style yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. So um, which was great. I didn't really learn anything until I started working because that's what you're saying. Yeah. Chowder, where you really got your real education, it's like... It's true, man. You know, it's like uh, you uh, you really learn when you're in the workforce and you're doing stuff that's practical. Yeah, you know, and you're yeah, scared. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you know, because you're like, yeah. I gotta, you know, I gotta keep this going, man. This is, it's too cool, and like, you don't wanna... Uh, so I'm, I think fear is a really good motivator, too, yeah, sometimes, you know? exactly. And, in, and, and, you, and you're inspired and it's a lot of things, you know, yeah. it's all these different... I believe that now with like, uh, like with my kid, it's like, I like to like show him like some scary stuff every once in a while. I think it's like healthy, not like super scary yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. but like little kid scary stuff. Cause it's like, I'm super nervous about him being like too like, to grow up to be like a spoiled, sheltered, like, yeah. you know, because it's like this weird LA lifestyle is so messed up. I guess what I'm saying is I agree with you. Fear is good. Yeah, it's a good. It's a, sometimes it's not always a negative thing. True, totally. Think about all the great children's stories that were scary. Yeah, man. All you know, like fear every, is like, in, in especially, I always say this to people too, is like fear is like, this is just as valid as anything. It's children's storytelling. Yeah. You know, it's just like all those grim fairy tales and Roald Dahl books were kind of dark at times. And It's true. The, um, so, all right, so you ended up, you, you worked on Chowder. Yeah. And then did you start working on your Uncle Grandpa? Oh, yeah, so. Short after that? So what happened with that is that, so, the, the development team at Cartoon Network changed mm -hmm. while I was moving out to go on Chowder. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that's it. You know, because I was like, you know, Stephen was like, ah, oh, this happens all the time in LA or in Hollywood, you know, like people switch jobs. So it's probably, there's probably nothing's going to happen. Yeah. And I was like, oh, all right, well, anyway, I'm really into this Chowder thing with jobs. So I'm just going to work on that, you know, concentrate yeah. on that. So I worked on Chowder for two seasons. And then while Chowder was happening, Cartoon Network went through a management change, and um, they um, they started that Cartoon Institute thing. Yeah. So as soon as that happened, Craig came to me and was like, "You should pitch us, Uncle Grandpa, and you should do it." And it's a Cartoon Institute. And I was like, "Oh, okay, okay." He's like, "No, really, really, really do it." He really encouraged me to do it, which was awesome because you know I didn't have you know sort of I guess the confidence to really think it was going to go anywhere. Yeah. And uh, 
So I did it, and it was amazing, man. I mean, talk about showing somebody like nothing and him going, yeah, do it. Yeah, like I, I like literally had no outline. I went into the pitch for the Uncle Grandpa thing with like some doodles like this on my sketchbook, and I said, it's about this guy, and I explained. I, he already saw the other pitch Bible I did, but it actually had changed a little bit since then. And, uh, and I just said, it's, this is, this is going to happen. So he's going to meet this kid, and, and they're going to make something. That's yeah. all I said. Like, together, it's going to be crazy. And he was like, all right. And he green lit me to do the board. That's and awesome. they, they paid me to do a thumbnail board, and, and I went off. And then I was like, OK, now I really have to figure this out. <laughs> i got to figure out what this Damn. show is and what this pilot is and whatever. So what was your process in figuring it out? It was uh, redoing it three times before <laughs> I pitched it. It was, uh, you know, the funny thing about it is like, I kept kept calling, running into this problem where the kid he was helping, or the kid that he was supposed to be paired up with in the story, was a like was a was a non character. It was just mm. like a generic kid, yeah. and I was like, this is this isn't going anywhere. Like I kept struggling, and I kept redoing the opening over and over again. And as soon as I got to the kid part, it was like just the story just died. It just didn't feel like it was funny or going anywhere. So as soon as I made it that kid, the, the, the nerdy kid, yeah. like the asshole kid, yeah. it was it wrote itself, man. It was like, nice. it was like, yeah. I gotta say, like, I think maybe I had met you once at a party or something somewhere. Yeah. I feel like maybe I met you at like Mallow or something at some weird party. Yeah, yeah. But, I think we did meet there, but and um, then we met at Annecy again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it was Uncle Grandpa that really was like oh that's that Pete Browder guy I gotta say I think I told you this yeah personally but I'll tell you I'll tell it for the podcast and the internet that that uncle grandpa short <laughs> was like one of the first things I ever saw that I was super jealous that oh, that's we didn't nice make here I saw that <laughs> and I was like fuck that's so good and I don't know we're pretty fucking you know like I don't know, we got a lot of super fancy artists and good dudes here. I feel like we produce good work and oftentimes we look at stuff and we're like, yeah, that's pretty cool, but we would have done it better. That one I saw and like, motherfucker, oh, man, it's so good. That's really nice. I <laughs> hardly ever see anything that good. Yeah. And it just, you so nailed it with that thing, man. I, re I really feel like I, I didn't even know what I was making, to be honest yeah. with you. I do, well, man. You know what, it was this whatever, weird thing. It was it like this, out. yeah, it worked out. It was like this weird, yeah. it was like this weird pure pureness of like, I just said to myself, I'm going to fucking put everything I think is funny in it. And I'm like, I don't care. If, then if I fail, like, who cares? Because it's like, at least it's, I think it's funny, yeah, right? And that, sure. that's like a new, like, like that kind of changed me and my perspective on, on making stuff. It was that's just like, the best attitude to have. It is, man, because it's like, you know, as long as you can make yourself laugh, we're all, like, human beings aren't that different. Somebody will find it funny, you know? Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> but um, it was, uh, and it was, I remember, I, I, and then I like, I actually canceled my first pitch because I wasn't done with it. And yeah, Janet yeah. Diamond was the producer, and she was like, "You better, you better finish that thing. Like, get in here; they want to see it." <laughs> and she was awesome. She was a great producer, and and, uh, and uh, I finally finished it. I remember the day of the pitch, I was still drawing it. And the funny story is, I had this. We, my my girlfriend at the time, but now my wife, we were had this a small a small apartment over over in Silver Lake, and uh, and. Um, it was, I, had, I had like a desk set up in our bedroom because it was so small and I was looking out the back window and I was like watching the clock looking out the big window trying to figure out the ending or the uh, the ending with all the tiger stuff yeah, yeah and I was like oh you should write a tiger but I was like man I got no time to figure out how to draw a fucking tiger yeah. so I just went on Google images and I just grabbed a picture of a tiger and threw it in there and yeah, <laughs> that was like everyone liked, everybody liked the tiger <laughs> Pretty funny. You know, that ending was great with the weird shooting lasers. And yeah, shit. yeah, like, yeah. I just thought the timing was great with the weird like magical hammers and. Whatever. Yeah, that was like, all Robert Alvarez man. So good, the timing man. on that, he was awesome. So good. And uh, so, how did you produce that? Was that like? It was. It was through the Cartoon Institute, which was yeah. just like it was basically like um um the series. It's like it was like a like having a green greenlit series on Cartoon Network where yeah. they they basically divide instead of all your episodes for series they divide every episode into a pilot and yeah. you just produce it and every all the work was kind of freelanced out to different artists. But was that animated by freelancers in the states or was that animated? It was it was Korea. It was uh, Dude, Rough Draft Studios so did it. Yeah, good. Yeah, it was really like, good. Like you know, 
Did you micromanage all the timing and stuff? Or? I really didn't, you know. I, I posed the board out pretty good. The board was clean, but not too crazy clean. It was like, you know, it was loose, but clear, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and um, I just, I just kind of didn't know better. I, you know, like I was sort of learning that process of how that all worked as I was doing it. So I didn't really know any better of how to micromanage it. Yeah, yeah. And so I just kind of left it to the animation gods and it, it worked well, out dude, pretty that well. One worked out great. Yeah, it worked out really, really. Yeah, you couldn't have planned it better, man. I was happy with it. But the, the, the pitch too was like, I didn't, I really didn't have a, a great idea of what I made and, 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 and and uh, I went in and pitched it, and people really liked it. I was like, "Oh, oh cool! They like it. Awesome!" Yeah. <laughs> I really didn't like didn't think people were gonna think it was funny. I mean, I thought it was funny, but I didn't I didn't know you know how people you never know how people are gonna react really. Sure. And the cool thing was like Craig brought like a bunch of the other cartoonists that were like in there making stuff like Chris Riccardi and and uh, Dave Smith and yeah. and Derek Dryman. It came up in the room, so it like made the room like lighter when I pitched it to the execs, and, it, That's like, and a they great laughed room. a lot too. Dave and they, Smith's like, a great. Oh laugher. yeah, man, yeah. he's the best. He's the best laugher, man. I'm it's gonna awesome. get him at this table one of these days. Yeah, he's he's a great guy. So then, right? So you deliver that pilot. It's awesome. Everybody thinks it's awesome, and you kind of got delivered like a kind of like a left turn, right? Yeah, I did. So I did. What so what happened at that point? So for whatever reason, they didn't really believe that Uncle Grandpa could have been a, uh, at that time, they didn't believe it could be turned into a, a series. They didn't really, um, I mean, I, they, they actually let me do a, a sort of Bible for the series, and I kind of, I think I took the wrong cues from the Cartoon Institute, because the Cartoon Institute was this thing where, I don't know if it'll ever happen again, at least at a major studio, like, it was literally like, whatever you pitched in that room, mm -hmm. when, when they said yes to it, they weren't allowed to change it. So you yeah, actually yeah. didn't get any notes. Yeah. And that's how I got like the lactating nipples in there. And that's how I got like, you know, the therapy joke yeah. and a bunch of stuff that you just can't do on kids TV. Yeah, yeah. And I took the, I think I took that, the, the wrong cue from that where it was like, oh, they want like, like an like a ed adult show. So yeah, I did this yeah. Bible for the series that was like way more adult. And I think it turned them off, and they were like, "Oh yeah, this is the oh, this is all he wants to do." Da, da, da. But if they, I mean, if I had known better that they were just like, make it make it just really kid friendly, I yeah, think, and yeah. that's sort of what it turned into now. Yeah. But uh, so so it it kind of backfired. That backfired and, and didn't work out. And they they wanted something else. Uh, and and I was like, all right, you want something else? So I, I actually just pitched the, the thing that I thought they would never go for, and then they went for it, which was yeah, so a show with an ass man and, and uh, <laughs> you know, about these disgusting monsters that live underground. So tell me a little bit about that process, because those were like, kind of like from like a very small sequence of the Uncle Grandpa. Yeah, father. yeah, I got a lot of compliments on some of those designs and stuff, and like, oh. you know, I, I, may, I was like, oh, cool, people, and that, those were actually, all, all those designs actually came from me doing this. Mm. Like just sitting and like not trying to like calculate a design and figure out like, oh, this monster should be like this and yeah, this. I would yeah. just like, I would just like freeform just sketch in a, my sketchbook or a piece of paper and then yeah, turn yeah. it into some kind of, you yeah, know, weird, good. weird monster thing. And then I was like, people really responded to them, which was cool. And I was like, oh, all right, well, maybe I'll try to make a show out of that. And then I, 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 uh, I did that. I did the fart, which was like this ass man. And I showed it to him and I was like, oh, good. Now well, maybe they'll get off my backs after they see this. Because I was, I, was, I was definitely disappointed about the Uncle Grandpa thing. Because sure. I, I, I figure I really like that character a lot. I like the like the I idiot genius it. type I heard of thing. That, that didn't get picked up. I was like, Whoa. and we got no, I got nominated for an Emmy too, so that actually helped, helped me even more. Like, yeah, because yeah. it was like they didn't pick it up, and then it got nominated for an Emmy, and then it was like, oh, uh, maybe we should have done that, and it, it actually it, it worked. It all worked out in the end. I got two yeah. two suits, and I like Secret Mountain was amazing because it was like this testing ground. Like I kind of learned yeah. my chop, like like my chops a little bit about how to run a show, and, and uh, yeah. So tell me a little bit about that. I, I, I remember when we were at Annecy, you won the uh, yeah the award for it. Yeah, that, that was big, giant crystal. That, that was, was amazing, that was man. That was a blast. That was amazing. That was such a great time. Yeah, because I met. I got to hang out with you yeah. and Antonio, and it was like, uh, and my uh, my wife and I just got married. Yeah, it was like 
really good time. I got to swim in that awesome lake every day. <laughs> it's fucking, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, if anybody is, has the opportunity to go to Annecy, you should go to Annecy. Yeah, it's, man. It's, it's absolutely. Are you going to go this year? Well, if, hopefully something gets in. We yeah, submitted. Yeah, we submitted you, two cause things. Because you, you uh, Uncle Grandpa wasn't eligible last year because yes, it got in the true. year before. Yeah, right? that's true. Yeah. yeah. We submitted two things a short film and, uh, and a TV. Yeah, it's something in the TV uh, category as well. Nice. So hopefully, That's I don't awesome. know when do you when does that come back? I mean, uh, when the results are whatever the nomination. I don't know is. when they tell you, but the festival is in June. Yeah, it's right? in June. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm going if if <laughs> if yeah, I get yeah. in. If we get in. Well, you know, this year is the uh, it's like the focus on women. Oh, that's um, cool. So Shan is going. Since we're both going, we're bringing the kid, and we're getting a house with Antonio and a bunch of people from Tiffany. Oh, Tip that's and, awesome! Man. And the wife and the kid and everything. So well, it's I'll gonna be, be a crazy time. I'll man. be coming hanging out that house. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be fun, man. That's <laughs> but awesome. But yeah, Annecy's the shit. I love it. I think that's the best festival. It is. It's like, the best. I liked a bunch of. The I've been to Sundance I mean, a long cool. time ago. I've never been to Ottawa. Yeah. I've always, I've always wanted it's to go cool. to Ottawa. I like it. Yeah. I actually pretty much like any festival or any yeah. convention or anything because it's fun to hang out. It is with fun, man. Folks, it's but social. fantasy wins for me as being the best one. Because not only does it have awesome shit to go watch, but it's the, one of the most beautiful places on earth. Yeah, like it's like it's like a like it's uh, it's like un it's from out of this world. It's, it's fucking amazing. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is so fucking beautiful here it's like crazy and you get to hang out with all these people that you wouldn't normally hang yeah. out with because yep. you know when are you gonna you know in la you're kind of lucky because you hang out with like most of the industry people yeah but it's also kind of insulated and you also kind of get that feel of like this is it this is everybody yeah. and then you go to annecy and look like, no there's a whole world of cool people making cool shit all the time that's so true and the other thing it really exposed me to is or like maybe realized was that like how big the animation business is yeah because there's like there's this yeah. thing that marketplace thing where they people sell shows and yeah. like buy shows it's like holy shit there's so much animation being made and that i'm not even aware of like yeah it's crazy you think you're like an animation fan and you're in the industry and you're like check stuff out on blogs or whatever but it's like there's so much going on man it's crazy yeah it used to be that you could never find that shit. Now with the internet, you can find a little bit more. Oh, you absolutely, see, yeah, like, yeah. Festivals, you find out. Like, you'd be like, well, I never, ever heard of this guy. You still get that. But now it's more like, I get to hang out with this dude that I've only seen on the internet yeah. before. And now, they're like a real person. Yep, exactly. So last year at Annecy, we were hanging out at like the Nickelodeon party, and there's this weird club, and like, um, we we're hanging out in the like VIP area, which is real. It's even weird that they have that like in an animation studio, but <laughs> or an animation festival. But um, it was this club, and these dudes were hanging out there. Like everybody seemed like weirdo animation people, except for these couple of dudes that seemed like way different. Yeah. They were more like French club guys. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> yeah. But um, and they kept like wanting to give us like super fancy champagne like this like like what's that oh Dom Perignon yeah, yeah these Perignon, like two hundred dollar yeah. bottles P, baby. of Dom Perignon <laughs> and they were like have some Dom Perignon and I was like ah oh, it's cool and he's like no have some so I'm like, okay and then he wanted to pour it directly into my mouth and I'm like what's going on yeah, this yeah. and this one dude took his ding dong out and he had a <laughs> skull and crossbones tattooed on it and it was just a weird scene and then See, that's Afterwards, why you want to go to was, Yeah, exactly. And that's why you want to go to Annecy, kids. Um, but I was asking Antonio after the fact, I was like, what was up with those guys? Because they were mostly speaking French. Yeah. And he's like, oh, those guys were drug dealers. They just come to this club every night. There's a big party and hang out in the VIP section uh, and try to sell people drugs. And I was like, oh, oh man, wow, I have that's crazy. no idea. I thought they were just weirdos. Um, it's not like the drug dealers here. Not like the drug dealers here. <laughs> They're very upfront about what they want for their business. Well, but um, yeah. So anyway, so Secret Mountain happened. Yeah, and uh, and then and that that, that kind of ended before it ever started, but it was amazing, and I'm so freaking proud of like a lot of those episodes we wrote. We like yeah. totally made the weirdest stories. It's fucking great, man. It's, it's a crazy so good show. And weird. So then that ended up not getting renewed and then how did they ultimately end up greenlighting Uncle Grandpa? 
Well, um, they, uh, how did it all go down? Let me think. Um, it was like, that ended, they asked me to like, uh, like be part of the new shorts, they were doing another shorts program. They asked me to kind of like help produce that, be a producer on it, supervising producer on it. So I agreed to do that, but I, uh, and then they asked, basically they had a meeting with me, like, what do you want to do? And I just said, I said, uh, I, want, I want to do Uncle Grandpa. Nice. And, and they were like, okay. They were like, do, they were like, do two boards, do two storyboards, and, and do a new Bible. And I went and I was like, I was like, okay, I'm going to make a kid, a six to 11 year old kid show. Yeah. Like, that's my goal. And I went away and. And uh, that's sort of what came out. And I did one of the boards, and Audie Harrison, who's a uh, um, supervised producer on, on the series, he, uh, he did the other one. And we pitched it. And I think they still were unsure of it, but they, they greenlit it for a small pickup, and then it worked out. So it happened pretty fast. But I got to, I got to, I got to do really cool stuff while I was part of that shorts program, though. I got to, like, um, see Clarence uh, be made. Yeah. Like I saw the first Clarence pitch and it was probably like the best pitch I'd ever seen in a, like, a, like in a, of a room like with yeah. executives and stuff. It was amazing. That's cool. And then I saw Pat McHale's, uh, oh, you know, it was called, um, it was called Tome of the Unknown at the time, but it's at Over the Garden Wall. I saw yeah. his pitch with that and the pilot be made. And uh, I, I got to, you know, just, I, I don't know if I helped at all, but I was around and I, uh, encouraged, <laughs> yeah, encouraged yeah. people, and I like, tried to like let le let them be left alone to make their their stuff um, yeah, cool. as much yeah. as I could, and uh, that was really cool. And then then the Uncle Grandpa thing happened really fast, and they basically said like, "You're the first series to go. You have we have to air in the fall, so you can't make mistakes." So I basically <laughs> like I, they were like, "You and and you have experience doing this, so we don't expect too many mistakes." So. Yeah. Go go make this, and they kind of oh, let me cool. alone and let me make it, which was really cool. But that's rare. Yeah, it was really um, rare. So can you tell a little bit about the, the so-called secret pilot for Uncle Grandpa? Secret. The one that you were making behind the scenes with cutscenes. If you edit them all. Oh together. yeah, yeah. That, that well, basically yeah. all that was was that I I I I in an episode of Secret Mountain. I put Uncle Grandpa in it, and I, yeah. I, I, we wrote the story, we designed the story in a, in a way where um, if you took all the Secret Mountain parts out of it and you just butted up in Final Cut Pro, yeah. <laughs> if you butt up all the scenes of Uncle Grandpa together, yeah. Yeah. it'll make a new Uncle Grandpa short. Yeah. And it worked out because uh, uh, we, uh, we did that, we put it online, it got a ton of, got yeah. of traction online. Yeah, I remember seeing that on the internet, being yeah. like, where did this come from? Yeah, I just, uh, it was just like... Because I knew I knew Secret Mountain was sort of over, yeah. so I was like, you know, what, at the least the I'm gonna I'm gonna make another, and that actually helped a lot with the series getting greenlit because it showed them that it worked again. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it helped a lot. Yeah. And the other thing I realized is like a lot of times they just want to see it work again, and you can just do the same thing over again. Yeah. Because like I think with when I went after after the first Uncle Grandpa pilot, and they asked me to do development on it and stuff. I think I overthought it and I tried to like expand it too much and change it too much because I was like yeah, yeah, didn't yeah. believe in the original thing and it was like this thing where all I did with that second one was actually Audie boarded that second one because it was part of his uh, Secret Mountain episode was we sort of wrote it in the same way where uh, it was sort of followed the same story structure as the first one and now that story structure is sort of what we roughly follow give or take with like whenever we do like a help a kid story in the series and stuff. So it really was a really good learning experience that way. Nice. But yeah, I was I was proud of myself that it worked <laughs> out. <laughs> nice, that's always good. And I don't know if they realized exactly what I was doing when yeah. I was doing it, but... Do they realize it now? Yeah, they do. Because yeah. Yeah. they saw it, like I, I showed it to them after yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. put together. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, now that you're in the uh, you know in the professional animation world, is there any like up and coming artists that you're like looking out at as like cool guys coming up? Hmm. Uh, I got a guy in the show called uh, named Jason Riker. who's amazing. He just graduated from Cal Arts, and he's like years ahead of himself. Like nice. work-wise, he's amazing. He's gonna do huge things. That's cool. A bunch of the guys on the show, like 
it's I'm so lucky. I, I feel like I have the best crew ever. That's awesome. Like uh, Andy Gonzalez is amazing. He was a designer. He was he worked in in New York forever. He went to school, he went to SVA, and then worked in like. I don't know exactly what he did. He didn't work in animation in New York. He did like motion graphics stuff. And he was always a really good cartoonist. And uh, he got a job out here doing prop design on, I think, Gravity Falls. When Gravity Falls was his first job, he moved out here. And I knew, I met him, I hung out with him. And he's like a really funny guy to hang out with. He really has a really great sense of humor and wit. Nice. And uh, when Uncle Grandpa came around, I was like, he'd be a good storyboard artist. But I don't know if he knows how to do storyboards. So I, I offered a revisionist job. He took it and he just like, Kicked ass doing revisions. That's a and, good. Uh, I think that's the best job to come. Up. That's the job I came up. Yeah, with. it is. It's it the is. best way to do Because not only do you have to fucking do your job, but you also get to hear either mm -hmm. the director, or the supervising yeah. directors, like, mm -hmm. like tear apart all the your fucking heroes, all these yeah. guys that you're aspiring <laughs> to be. They're like, look at what this guy did. Fuck, fuck, yeah. you gotta fix this. But about but about whatever. So, it's so true. You it's know? so true. And uh, yeah, that's like valuable like lesson learning type shit yeah um and then uh yeah and then he just kicked ass he's one of the like you know he does amazing storyboards and then mike chillian's like that mike yeah. chillian made little films totally. he worked here yeah doing stuff yeah and, he's uh, awesome i want to get him great. at this desk too yeah he's 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 his sketchbook's awesome yeah and then uh and then dave gimmels is a guy that i've you know seen his work when i was in new york on like the drawing board do you remember that that, that like the, it was called the drawing board it was like a I don't know, it's like this forum, mm -hmm. and you could post work and stuff. That. To check that well, out. It, I don't think it's around anymore, but mm -hmm. but uh, I always thought his work was amazing. I was so lucky to have him, and then and then I got uh, recently uh, Kenny Kenny Pettinger uh, from SpongeBob. He he basically is like was the background designer, layout supervisor for SpongeBob since the beginning. Yeah. And I was, and he has this blog. It's hilarious. And uh, I was like, man, this guy could do storyboards. This guy is yeah. so funny. And That's one thing. Butt. Every time we hire a storyboard guy or an editor, yeah. when we do the interview, I always ask them to tell me a joke because I like to see how, yeah. how, like they handle it. It's not that they have to have a good joke or anything, yeah. but if they can like tell a story or react in a way that's funny or have good timing, it's so telling. It's not always like there are some storyboard artists that are like weirdos that yeah and they're still the fucking, uh, and they still do great brilliant points, but yeah, yeah, yeah. if they can tell a joke and tell it well it's a really good indicator if they can like tell a story yeah either, it's so true like in boards or yeah you're, i think i think that i got that from you i, I really? somebody yeah somebody told me that <laughs> and I, I remember I hearing that, that that's so true so it's just a uh if someone can tell a joke if you can do like a three panel comic or a four panel yeah. comic and do a joke you can translate them and do boards because yeah, it's yeah. all it is is that that sort of structure stretch, sort of stretched out sometimes over totally. over a lot of a lot of things <laughs> but um yeah it, it's it's just cool it's like um i'm trying to think and then nick edwards was a huge find and i found nick through twitter like yeah, man, nick nick too. complimented secret mountain and like That's someone was great. like Someone was like, somebody on Secret Map was searching Twitter stuff, and they're like, this kid loves your stuff, check out his work. And I was like, I was like, oh my God, this guy's amazing. And I knew if Uncle Grandpa was going to happen, I was going to hit him up. Dude, that's your, that Twitter and Tumblr and stuff. That's the best advice I could give anyone. People. Yeah, just, yeah. Just, just put your work Set online. Set your stuff out yep. there. Do make it. It's so different than it used to be. Yeah. You can ha you have like global reach automatically. Yep. It's up to you to Dude, do I it. Dude, I haven't looked at I haven't looked at a regular portfolio in like a decade. We don't accept them yeah, anymore. Yeah, I yeah. tell them like, don't ever leave a portfolio here. Just send me a link. It's yeah. the only way we're gonna look at it. That's so true. Yeah. I'm trying to think what else have I seen recently. I really like sick animation stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that. The really young, cool. Uh, and then on the flip side of that, any influences like coming up that you looked at or I just saw this music video from this band called Throne uh -huh. uh, I think they're from the UK and uh, if you look up on YouTube it's like Throne search Throne animation so it's a, it's a it's a music video that was all animated with stitched denim whoa <laughs> it's a, a fucking amazing it's nice. amazing dude I, I forget the the guy who directed its name but he does a bunch he's a UK I think he's a British like commercial director and animator filmmaker nice. guy and uh it's it's incredible dude it's like a sci-fi epic little story about like like uh this, this 
going to this planet and stuff. You, you got to see it. It's, it's amazing. It's like four minutes long, so definitely check that out. That, I just saw it today, and I watched it like three or four times in a row. I was like blown away. Um, yeah, you ever, like, speaking about that Annecy and stuff, Yeah. you ever hang out with somebody at one of those places, and then you're like, oh, that dude's cool or whatever, and then you check out their shit, and then you're like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. That happened at the Annecy with that guy on... Oh, I don't fuck up his name. It's like Jeremy Pevin, I think is his name. Do you see any of that guy's work? No, I don't know if I've ever Gotta seen Gotta check that shit out, man. Yeah. He did like this, like one of the more earlier, like kind of like 8-bit, 16-bit kind of videos with this trucker and this like this crazy shit happens where they familiar. fucking... So like, he goes into insanity and then he did this one with this... Uh, Oh, I guess we're almost done. He did this, this one with the these teenagers that sneak into this pool and they, this monster. Comes oh yeah, out I've of seen that. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah, we're amazing. hanging out with yeah. you, Prime Minister. We're I hanging out with that dude in Annecy, and he's realize. like, "Oh, this cool dude." And then <laughs> yeah. I checked out his shit. I'm like, "Dude, this guy is fucking awesome." That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I guess we're about to wrap it up. Now. Right, so man. this is one of the fun parts. I'll sign I don't remember this. what I drove on the other side. And then. We each sign. Thanks a lot. Thanks, man. Tell me, Pets, what we yeah, did. Yeah, dude, we did it. That was, right, that was painless. Thanks, man. Chirp.